prophecy. We're going to get ready to go into the Word of God, so I want you to get your Bibles and turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 18, and we're going to pick up where we left off at last time. And we're continuing to talk about preparing a people. Preparing a people. Touch your neighbor and say, you are being prepared, prepared. For, a for a miracle. And Genesis chapter 19, and we're going to begin to read this in the NIV, verse 9 to ver Genesis 18, verses 9 to verse 15. Genesis chapter 18, verses 9, beginning. Where is your wife Sarah, they asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent, which was behind him. And Abraham and Sarah was already old and were advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she laughed and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Touch your neighbor and say, why are you laughing? It's coming your way anyhow. Now, when we begin to understand where we left off, we left off dealing with some principles. And we also dealt with the fact that faith has the ability to be paralyzed by fear. We also dealt with misery plus destiny will develop your ministry. Say that with me. Ministry plus destiny will develop your ministry. Say it again. Misery plus destiny will develop your ministry. In other words, God will take your misery and turn it into mis ministry. He'll take that which was miserable in your life, that which was dung, that which was designed to destroy you, that which was designed to eliminate you, God will take your misery, wrap it up with destiny, and out will come ministry. Amen. That's why we laid hands on our brother today, amen, Brother Gene, amen, as he danced before the Lord and ministered before the Lord. Because what he went through in his life, that was a season of misery, was in preparation to develop ministry. See, sometimes you don't know that God is a healer until you've passed through some situations that you've needed a miracle. Sometimes you don't believe that God is really a way maker until you need a way made. Amen. Sometimes you don't realize that God is a heavy load sharer unless you have a heavy load that you need him to share and help pick up. But I want you to know that as we begin to learn some things concerning God, you're going to pass through some situations. It's going to look like your prophecy is not coming to pass. It's going to look like the word of the Lord that's been spoken to you is not going to happen. Here, God's been talking to me about babies for the last 15 years. No babies have come. I'm old. My master's old. My God, he's impotent. The Bible says Abraham did not even consider the deadness of his own flesh. Amen. He couldn't even get it up and hear God's talking about a baby. How many know that God can get into that which can't get up? Thank you, Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, I know that's right. Amen. You might be in the middle of midlife crisis. You need a resurrection. You need God to intervene on your behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But the Holy Ghost, amen, when we begin to understand here in the scripture, Sarah was in a frustrated season. Believing for a promise, and, uh, and, and really what she was asking, God, are you teasing me? 
Now, you know, sometimes you get prophetic words and you say, Lord, are you teasing me? Sometimes God speaks things to you so often you say, God, now listen, are you teasing me? Amen, Lord, are you going to really do this through me? Are you really going to work this out in me? Are you going to really bring me forth? Lord, are you serious about this thing? God, what are you saying? I cannot see it in the natural. I can't see it in my flesh. See, that's where Moses was at in the predicament. When God was getting ready to raise him up, who, me, how, me? Amen, I can't even talk. You're telling me that I'm going to go and deliver the children of Israel and I'm going up against Pharaoh, that mighty kingdom? How in the world am I going to do it? And then God begins to reveal himself as I am that I am. Amen. See, I will be to you what you will allow me to be. Amen. And in a system and in a, and in a society where we are swimming against the odds. Amen. In a system and in a society and in a community and a culture. Amen. Where it has been designed for us to begin to fail. Amen. We're in a system. We're in a society. Amen. Where we are dealing with forces out of hell. Amen. And racism is on an all-time rise. And when you try to do something positive, you make one step forward. Something pushes you three steps back. But I want you to know that when you put your hope and trust in God, he's going to bring you out. He's going to bring you forth. If you begin to make God your priority, if you begin to put your trust and demands on his anointing, I want you to know that he raises you up in spite of the odds. Amen. He calls your name to surface to the front of the line. Amen. He brings you out of obscurity. Amen. And even when your oppressor is trying to keep you down, the Holy Ghost have a way of giving you eagle's wings and bearing you up. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm coming forth. I'm coming forth. Touch somebody else and say, your prophecy, your prophecy is working. Now we begin to understand that God dealt with several things as we are reviewing. Nature and experience cause Sarah to have a fixed mindset. And oftentimes you can be in systems that can create fixed mindsets. Amen. For instance, if a black man is running for a bus, you say, well, he must have committed a crime. Where a white man is running, he must be running for a bus. Amen. You can have fixed mindsets. Amen. Like in our community, a lot of times, a lot of our black, all, a lot of them, a lot of them uh, in our community, our black sister says, men are no good. Child, let me tell you. You better get your man in check. Come here, let me talk to you. You don't even need a man. And that next starts shifting gears. I get my man told. But let me share something with you, amen. That is the spirit of the age. That's the spirit of the hour. That even when women are submitting to their husband, it is like a thing like, they're ashamed, like I can't let my girlfriend know that I broke down, amen, and became subject to my man. <laughs> my God is getting quiet in here today. But when we begin to understand we are in a society that can create fixed mindsets, amen, fixed mindsets, where you begin to become locked into a certain controlled environment. But now God in this hour is beginning to do something like he had to deal with Sarah, who had a fixed mindset. I'm old. I'm beyond years of bearing. It's over for me. But how many know that God breaks rules and change your mindset and just mess things up? So we're going to see next year this time, Sarah's going to be messed up. And see, some of you are going to be messed up. Because that which you thought was not going to manifest, your prophecy you thought which wasn't going to happen, God who spoke some things to you, told you he was going to be opening doors, I want you to know that he's cutting roads and ways and paths that you never thought would ever happen before. We get letters in the often office quite often. Amen. Letters coming in. One woman wrote us, says that she did not believe her prophetic word. She walked out not believing that that thing would come to pass. But weeks later, she had to reach back and grab that word because it happened just the way God said it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We have situations, amen, where we, a, a, a testimony was shared how we gave a word of the Lord to a man in Virginia and gave him the word of the Lord and God told him he was going to restore his family. Him and his wife was divorced. They were divorced about, I think it was, was it 13 years or 18 years? 13 years they were divorced. 
They were divorced for 13 years. Amen.